control the Senate could hinge on North Carolina. A backwoods brewing, tobacco growing, and craft beer defining state. The Senate race here could actually hinge on craft beer. We're serious. Bills and bruises down here checking out the state's craft guzzling third party candidate, Sean Haw, who may sip Harry Reid right back into power. Oh, and we get him to open up about smoking pot during the campaign. This is the first time anybody's asked me directly. So sit back, crack a cold one, as Bills and Brews does Durham. North Carolina is at the center of the East Coast craft beer revolution. Asheville gets all the love. We're here in Durham, home of Bull City, Fullsteam, Ponysaurus, and one of our favorites, Triangle Brewing. Just trying to make beers that don't suck. Craft beer is a big deal down here, but is it enough to swing this election? Let's go find out. I would say that uh, I don't know what his, uh, what his views are, but if he's drinking craft beer, you know, I definitely would listen to him. See, I'm not drunk. Eh, at least not yet. Let's go meet this crafty candidate. Sean, welcome to Bills and Brews. Well, Cheers. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Finally, I get a drink with Craft Beer's candidate. What made Craft Beer stand out and made you want to use that as this device to attract voters? One real problem that we have in politics is that I think people feel like they have to present themselves as these sort of sanitized, prepackaged uh, products. But that makes you a cunning politician. It is. It, it, oh, it's calculated. Sure. Just totally being myself and at the same time understanding the calculations behind how other people are going to perceive me. Uh, I love taking advantage of that. I have absolutely no shame about it at all. I think the average voter is the kind of person who would be happy to have a beer every once in a while and understands that a person having a beer isn't necessarily some kind of lush, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Will Haw's strategy work? We asked some Duke MA students and other people with tattoos we love what they think. Do you think I mean, just drinking beer can attract a voter populace? Or... I do. do. I do. I don't want the dude running the free world to be the guy I want to drink a beer with. He's just trying to be outlandish. You know what I mean? So you it's like you're going to win some like... with that, you're going to lose some with that. Like, that's is it outlandish? Or is it's he just not trying outlandish. to have a I think fucking it's fucking beer. funny because he looks a little, I mean, he's just like a geeky guy. We ask every candidate their first beer or drink. And uh, we start with my story. Okay. I was three years old. My dad, uh, <clears throat> I'm from Chicago. We had the oh, Cubs yeah. game on. He went to the restroom, put an old style out on the table. And my five-year-old brother was like, hey, let's drink dad's drink. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my brother cracks it, drinks a little, and I drink a little. Yeah. Dad comes out of the restroom, we're so proud. So proud. Of course. And we got our asses swatted so uh, hard. Well, I had a similar but much happier experience. So I had uh, Aunt Polly and Uncle Bill, and we were at some get-together at their house when I was five, and Uncle Bill thought it would be hilarious to hand me a Budweiser. Uh, and I drank about half of that and was the life of the party for about half an hour until I passed out. Uh, I grew up in Oklahoma in the 60s and 70s. Tulsa also happens to have a very large gay and lesbian community. Uh, so there were gay and lesbian bars all over town uh, at the time, but they were all kind of secret. And the police didn't want to acknowledge that they existed. So it basically, as long as a murder didn't go down at one of these places, they were free zones. And so I was able to go to these bars when I was 15. And they all knew I was there and they didn't, nobody bothered me, you know, or, uh, you know, I always felt perfectly safe. Uh, but, yeah, when I was a teenager, I was able to start going to bars because of that underground scene. Enough on craft beer. Let's talk craft drugs. And then drug policy? Not a legalization of drugs because, um, I mean, there certainly are drug problems. In Let's go down the list. Legal, illegal. Yes. Heroin. Legal. 
all marijuana. Of all of it. Because PCP? Yeah. I mean, you're stupid to take it, but you know, yeah. Acid? Yeah, oh yeah. Because stupid to take it? I'm not going to judge that. But if we legalize all drugs, then people can feel free to come forward and seek help, to seek treatment. When you drive that stuff underground, you create a whole host of new problems. And do you smoke weed? I have, yeah. I have on occasion. I'm not afraid of it, and I don't have a problem with people who do. Not regularly? Well, have you smoked during the campaign? I actually do. Uh, I actually do. This is the first time I've admitted it to anybody. So, but this is the first time anybody's asked me directly. You know, I'm, I'm 54. I have arthritis, but I don't have arthritis pain. You know, uh, thanks to that, that's the one thing I can use if I'm feeling arthritis pain. You see here, I have this Ooh. kind of carpal tunnel action Damn. going here. Yeah, I know it looks ugly, but it doesn't hurt. Thing, if you look at places that have passed legal medical marijuana by referendum, you know who the biggest group of people who come out and vote for it are, are seniors. People 65 and older who do use it on occasion for the exact same reasons that I would. It has a lot of real medical benefits. Uh, how's North Carolina weed? Uh, certainly a hell of a lot better than what I saw in the 70s. Oh, maybe a little high, but it seems to be working. He's polling at about 5% which some analysts say is stealing votes away from Republican candidate Tom Tillis. Are you a Democrat? Are you supporting? No. I filed as an act of conscience so that I personally could walk into the voting booth in November and vote for something other than more war and more debt. It's just cookie cutter, like, oh, here's the red, here's the blue, and then go at it. And you already know, like, before you even watch the debate, you know what they're going to say. And so, with um, this libertarian, that could be, you know, a fresh voice. <laughs> yeah, he makes some great points. Like, you either pick, like, the lesser of, you know, two evils kind of thing. To me, they're just both complete corporate shills, you know, uh, bought and paid for already by big money special interests and not paying any attention to the people. You're bought and paid for by craft beer. <clears throat> no, I buy craft beer, <laughs> and I pay for it myself. That's the difference. Good man. Should Congress meet at a pub? It certainly helped. But now some people would ask you, are you drunk, to think that you can be a U.S. senator. You're pulling about 5% right now. Well, right now there are only three people in this state who could possibly be elected the next U.S. senator, and I'm one of them. Sure, Sean Haw's a long shot candidate, but a long shot who just might be the craft beer king or queen maker of the U.S. Senate. Cheers. Good luck to you. Good. All right. Too good. Time. <laughs> I'll take that.